With a 360 Dragonfly perspective, we can see the hijack playbook, and instead of continuing the pattern of chaos and disorder and separation, we can come together as one tribe, one vibe, and put order over chaos. We are simply choosing to put most high over everything. The code is the cheat code. Allow. Wow. Hey. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> we on the warpath. Yeah, man. We on the warpath, cut. We on the warpath. What it do? Oh. Go get these dog heads, man. We're going to get these dog heads, man. We're going to get these dog This is <laughs> the Press the Job Investigation. What it do? What it do? Yeah, we're going to get these dog heads. Shout out to Two Tick Rick. We gonna get the, this dog heading has got to stop. Hey, if you're not in the Discord, get in here, man. This is where we kick back. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, share some things, man. <laughs> got some um, categories you can get in on. You know, we don't have to press the category up yet. That's astonishing, right? So we gotta add that. <laughs> but we got Indigenous Truth flat drop. Press the John is Indigenous Truth, though. <laughs> We definitely need, like, you know, President deserves his own category, man. MHOE, if you got some fashion drop, you know, tribe of music, you want to drop in about the Sobo podcast, leave your comments. You know, you got some energy frequency drop, man. You know what I mean? You just want to talk about the code, man, most of everything. Let's get it, man. Flat drop 101. This is who got the drop, man. Shout out to Denarius Israel. What they do? No Nori, what it do? All the cars is up in here, man. Mike Lowry, what it do? <laughs> yeah. I was going to surf the wave, but you see it, because we about to get busy. It's Preston John 133. Cahokia, man. man. So much drop. So much drop around this Cahokia. Yeah. God. So much drop on this Cahokia flow. Man, the water to the cons. This is amazing, recar. We get to continue to, you know, get this drop. All the Tartaria flow, man. Y'all, y'all think they built this, man? <laughs> Do you think they built this, man? Yeah. Oh yeah, we got the recap popping on Patreon. If you ain't got it yet, click the link below. Sign into our Patreon because that's where the recaps are going on. We're going to do the Cities of Gold series over there from now on because too much copyright jive is happening on the YouTube. <laughs> so sign up to the Patreon. Sign up to the Discord. My nice popping off, man. Let it go. Uh, ooh, ooh, uh. Yeah, wherever we start chatting at, man, we call it the drop chatting box, man. <laughs> ka, ka. Hey, 2 J gave... So many great visuals I used in, uh, you know, the Year of the Dragon Flow. Go get that Year of the Dragon Flow, man. Hey, what it do? Gotta let y'all know. Gotta let you know. Yeah, shout out to the sister, Corte Denea. She out here um, in L.A., man. She pops off that Kempo. My big bro, he teaches Kempo uh, in Vegas, man. So, you know, I grew up on that Kempo, man. So shout out to you, Ancient Power, because I do, you know, rock with the... Aqua, man, I see, you know, her uh, developments, improvements, man, and just how she's popping off and just bringing it to life, man. The sister's doing her thing. Man. Shout out to Corte. Aqua Corte. All the family checking in. So get in here, man. Oh. Man, the Kai has something he dropped on this water. Let's see. Oh, man. I went back pretty far, man. It's a lot going on. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. Shout out to Anthony, man. That's pretty dope, man. That's pretty dope. Ooh, two tick rig. Shout out to St. Tomas. Popping off. Yeah. Oh, oh we in the ether. Yeah. Is, is that a dragon on the chest bone at the cool say, man? Shout out to who got it, man. Who got it? 
Who got the drop? <laughs> it's the year of the dragon, though, right? It's the year of the dragon. God. They say it brings fortune for those who've been getting jammed up, man. <laughs> Come on in here, man. You know what I'm saying? The server is popping off, man. We're having a good time. Yeah, I'm belly flopping. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. First first of all, shout out to Two Tick Rick. Old clip, right? Old clip. It says the subterranean lake of pure water, which has been found under London, large enough to furnish the city's entire water supply. You got that water. You got that water. Wow. Oh, wow. Large enough to furnish the entire city's water supply, boss. So they found a whole lake of pure water under London, but they don't talk about it no more, boss. What happened to that lake of pure water in London, boss? Is it still there? Is it still pure? What about this, man? What? Enormous lake of pure cold water in underground London. Walter Mosley, the engineer of the London City Council, has informed that body that underneath London is an immense lake of pure cold water in a chalk basin. 2,506 square miles in extent and 100 feet below the surface of the ground. Y'all still think it's pure water? Man, shout out to Yosef the Real, because, you know, <laughs> we know that mem sauce is flowing. Uh-oh, Daenerys. Uh-oh, Daenerys. Damn. Damn, damn, man! Y'all get in this, <laughs> y'all get in this Discord, man. Um, I, you know, all I can tell you is I have a good time checking in, and y'all inspire me to, you know, just keep the press the flow going, keep the indigenous truth flowing, man. Get back on the flat drop one on one, all that stuff, man. And I got Ty in here right now, popping off, man. I got Ty got that. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk some Amazon Queen drops, so. That's right on time, Aqua Time. That's right on time. Peace and power to the Aqua. Yeah, pa. Peace and power to the Aqua Esther. Yeah, Aqua Time popping off, man. <sighs> okay, okay. I got to catch up. I got, I got some catching up to do. We got the fabrics here. I want to talk more about these fabrics. Because we, you know, talked a little about, well, I asked a question before about the hemp and the cotton. You know, um, for the most part, no one really, you know, we don't have a, a source of consideration when it comes to the hemp and cotton. And we don't know if that was really in the translators' minds, you know, when the whole mixing of fabric flow from Leviticus 19, I believe, Deuteronomy is at 22. Um, my jigger had a great question. You know, it's like, uh, does that apply to hemp and cotton or just the wool and linen? I know that's an example but scientifically, we can see how the wool and the linen uh, will cancel each other out, right? You know what I'm saying? Let's, let, let's, let's get this because we can't talk Presta without talking the garments, God. In 2003, a Jewish doctor named Heidi Yellen conducted a study on the frequencies of fabric. According to this study, the human body has a signature frequency of 100 and organic cotton is also the same. The study showed that if the number is lower than 100, it actually puts a strain on the body. A diseased, nearly dead person has a frequency of about 15, and that is where polyester, rayon, and silk register. Non-organic cotton registers a signature frequency of about 70. If the fabric has a higher frequency, it gives energy to the body. Come on. This is where linen comes in as a super fabric. Come on. Its frequency is 5,000. Oh. Wool is also 5,000. Okay. But when mixed together with linen, 
the frequencies cancel each other out and fall to zero. Mm. Even wearing. So that's scientific. Now, have they done this same science, let's say, with hemp and cotton or, you know, yada, yada, you know what I'm saying? Um, it seems like there's more of an emphasis on this one right here because these are two high frequencies that strictly cancel each other out. I don't believe that hemp will cancel wool out, you know, or cotton out or linen out, you know what I'm saying? I want to see the science of it. So it's not so much, uh, I mean... So somebody left a crazy comment. They were like, yeah, it makes sense, Drop. You know, you know, haters go hate. hate. Haters go hate. I'm coming to you as my wise counsel. <laughs> Everybody needs a wise counsel. I'll come to Drop Nation and ask a question. Of course, you're going to have some haters in the classroom. Hey, Drop. Yeah, it makes sense you're going to ask man. Why would you ask man? Just <laughs> instead of the most high. Well, we know that translators be translating, man. Don't be no fool. All right. Do you have a pure translation from Hawa <laughs> when it comes to Leviticus, man? So we have to ask wise counsel, right? We have to ask Drop Nation, you know what I'm saying, about things that I don't know. We don't know. We got to put it out there. That's why we got the Discord. That's why we got 432thedrop.com. Hey, shout out to my IT line. It's 432thedrop.com. It's coming in hot. And it's where all this is going to be right there. So you're not going to have to go separate places. It's all going to be home, man. But, yeah, this is a home of drop nation, man. We're asking questions. So, you know, does the mixing of fabrics, since we're talking the Prester, the priestly garments, right? Blue, purple, red, white, linen, gold thread. We know other mixing, mixes such as polyesters and, you know, all the stuff they mentioned carry a low frequency just by default. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even have to mix polyester with nothing for it to have a low frequency. You know, check your drawers, man. I had to go through my underwear drawer, look at all the polyester drawers I had. Check your drawers, right? Because <laughs> why have a low frequency on your drawers, right? So, hey, MHOE, man. Hey, my jigger, we're going to have to come out with <laughs> some some cotton drawers, man. Like, we got to supply the Nagas with, you know, their, their superhero Naga you know what I'm saying, uh, garments, man, you know, from head to toe, man, for real, for real, because I'm interested. So, you know, does anybody got the science on the hemp and the cotton, you know? From what they say, hemp strengthens cotton, cotton strengthens hemp. But I don't have the science of anything canceling each other out or nothing like that. So it's a, it's a good question because hemp sometimes can be a little, or cotton can be a little, softer than hemp and sometimes if you blend them in you got a softer fabric you know what i'm saying um so we're trying to you know think about comfort you know as we talk about mhoe most of everything flow um you know it doesn't have to be 100 percent hemp or can it mix with cotton without canceling itself out will it still be at five thousand will it be let's say at one thousand one thousand is better than 100 though right so you know it's a good fair question my jig ahead i got we're asking a wise council drop nation because that's what you do when you don't know, you know, and we know translators be translating. <laughs> so you got to ask the right question. Wearing a wool sweater on top of a linen outfit in a study collapsed the electrical field. The reason for this could be that the energy field of wool flows from left to right, mm. while that of linen flows mm. in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. More science. We're getting science in the press to 133. Let me get that back a little bit because that might help determine which which ones are going to cancel each other out. That's the science of the garment you wear. Is it flowing from left to right or right to left? My night It's amazing. Study collapsed the electrical field. The reason for this could be that the energy field of wool flows from left to right while that of linen flows in the opposite direction. Linen right to left, wool left to right. Now, which way does hemp flow? <laughs> which way does cotton flow? Now we can start scientific. Now we can get science to ask, you know, answer, you know, some of these questions, my again. Again, do we have any more description on which other fabrics not to mix specifically? Or should we just take it as, don't mix any fabrics. To me, that'll be like when the Jewish on their Sabbath days, like they don't flip on the light switch because they feel like the fire and the light bulb 
is against what the creator is talking about because somebody got struck down for building a fire. And you got to remind these niggas that building a fire is work. Flipping on the light switch is not work. The whole point is don't work. <laughs> Rest, you know what I'm saying? So when we factor in technology, you know, the translators aren't thinking about a, a light switch. They're just talking about the fire, right? Building a fire, right? So you have to get deeper, Managa. You, you got to see 360. You can't just let the translators be translate, man. All right? They don't flip on light switches because they just took it as a general <laughs> generalization. They, they ain't using common sense. So we got to use common sense to say, all right, is it going for all fabrics that we shouldn't be mixing? Or is it specific ones and it has to do with the science because it's flowing from right to left or left to right? Or what's really going on? We know for sure don't mix linen and wool. And definitely stay away from all these blends, right? The polyesters and all that stuff. So we know we can at least rock with the 100% cotton, linen, wool, hemp, right? All separately, you know. But was hemp taken into consideration when during this particular translations of not mixing fabric. It was hemp in the translator's mind, All right, that's the question. <laughs> we have it. From right to left, I have observed that when I wear synthetic clothes on a rare occasion, I get a lot more static and sparks fly. Okay. Could that be? Ooh, so he's getting a negative charge. That battle got the drop, and then, then we had the Denver airport. All right, man, hold on, man. Let's let's fall back for a second. Let's pull up. Uh, <laughs> I'm having I'm having a good time at 133. 133 is like the culmination of all 133 drops. I got a little. I got a few links up from from you know basically all my favorite joints. You know what I'm saying? And this is gonna be like a mixtape, like a Prester John mixtape, man. Let's go. We on the warpath. We on the warpath. Let go. Okay. Again, do Jeremiah thirty. Jeremiah thirty. The word came to Jeremiah from Hawa, saying, "Thus speaks Hawa, the power of Israel, saying." Write thee all the words that I have given unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, says the while, that I will turn the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. So while these hijacks freaking out about whatever is to come, whatever is happening in the skies, Hawaii said, I'm going to turn your captivity. I'm going to turn things around. I will cause them to return to the land. So as soon as you get free, <laughs> you return to your land. As soon as you KTC, you get free, you return to your land. One, two, three. KTC, then you get free. <laughs> then you return to your land. Managa, hit the easy button, man. All right. <laughs> hit the easy button, man. It's that simple. No cap on my number two pencil. KTC, get free. Then you get your land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. And these are the words that Hawah spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says Hawah, we have heard a voice of trembling. Uh, that'll be you, my lord. That'll be you. Right. Calling out. Of fear, not of peace. That's what they got us saying. Because their peace ain't your peace. And don't tell me you had peace if you ain't got your land back. Ask you now and see whether a man does travail with child. Is any man pregnant? Because that's how much y'all crying over here. Things are so bad. You're tired of the hijack. You're tired of all this trafficking. You're tired of all this adrenochrome. You're tired of all this kidnapping. You tired of all this massacre and genocide on your people? Psychological warfare. 
You're tired of these towers with all this, you know what I'm saying, unhealthy frequency on you, man. You're tired of your, you know, <laughs> jammed up water. You're tired of your jammed up food. Are you, are, are you in labor because you're crying? Your voice is trembling to Hawa. It better be. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into pale, paleness. Alas, for that day is great. What day? <laughs> My naga, that day. Hey, it's the year of the dragon, man. You got great American solar eclipses popping off, man. You got signs on signs. We got a brand new year. Hey, you got Tacoom says coming. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is a time of trouble unto Jake. But out of it he shall be saved. And it shall come to pass in that day. Says Hawa of hosts that I will break his yoke from off your neck. We're on a war path. Preston John investigation reminds you that you're on a warpath. You've been asleep the whole time, but you're at war, you know. They can still be at war with you while you sleep, by the way. According to the uh, Geneva Convention. Gene Geneva Code. <laughs> you put down your bow and arrow. <laughs> they can still be at war with you. They were supposed to give you things. Instead, they gave you welfare, <laughs> EBT. Nah, that wasn't the deal for putting down your bow and arrows, for putting down your <laughs> weapons of destruction on the hijack. How long shall we endure? Hawaii says, it shall come to pass in that day. Says Hawa that I will break the yoke from off your neck, ball, and I will burst your bands. That means you are free. And strangers shall no more make him their bondman. These people on our land are strangers. They are not originals. They shall no more make you their slave. Verse 9, Jeremiah 30, but they shall serve a while their power. Let's get that right. Let's get that right. Because when your bands are broke, when your bands are bursting, and that yoke is broke off your neck, oh, you better be serving the Creator, my naughty. Unless you want to put that yoke back on and then bands back on and get that trouble back out. You want your face pale again? You want to be back in trouble, man, or you want to be saved? You want these strangers on your land? You want to be their slaves? Or shall you serve the Creator with all your heart, ball? A while. And David, their king. That means there's order on the land. <laughs> that means that on this land right here called Earth, you have a con, you have a king forever. And it ain't no switching up. It ain't no making a new covenant because you don't like this king. You want Jesus? You want Muhammad? Hawa gave you order and the scepter would never depart from Judah because David is your con, whom I will raise up unto them. David is ran, rising. <laughs> is David rising again, Cub? Okay. Let's go. This is 
with Preston. Ow. I let go. Nice and smooth. Take it nice and smooth. Therefore, fear not. Feel that. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant. Man, get that fear out your heart. He didn't say to the hijack not to fear. He said, Jacob, fear not. Right? <laughs> hijack, just because we ain't fearing don't mean you don't have to fear. Because our peace ain't your peace, right? Well, don't work that way this way, right? Neither be dismayed. Who? Oh, Israel. Got it. We're talking to a tribe. Got it. For lo, I will save you. Hawa will save who? Israel. Got it. God's going to save the world? No. Jacob. Got it. Because you only of all the families have I known. Amos 3. Jacob, Israel, I will save you. <laughs> Jesus will come down and rapture me. I will save you, fool. Where you getting this from, man? New Taz, who wrote that? <laughs> I will save you. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they, your seed, man, not just you, but your children, your seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall again be quiet and at ease. Because once upon a time, Jacob, you was quiet and at ease. And no one shall make you afraid. For I am with you. Jesus Jesus with me. Praise Jesus. I'm saved with the blood of Jesus. I am with you, fool. I'm with you, man. Your mama, your daddy with you. Says a what? To do what? To save you. Jesus is going to say. I am with you. Says Hawa to save you. That don't change man. That don't switch up. <laughs> that connection is forever. The hijack says someone else is in the way. The hijack says to go another way. You have to go home. KTC. MHOE. Then you got Hawa. Then you got your shepherd. Then you got Dawi. <laughs> yeah, then you got that that water. Then you got your land back. That's the first thing Hawa wanna do. It's wakey wakey. Welcome back home. I will turn the captivity of my people, Israel, Judah. That's two cross states coming together, Israel and Judah, northern and southern tribes. I will cause them to return to their land that I gave to their fathers and their mamas, right? Let's go. Ah, ah, ah. Shout out to the cons in the Discord, man. Y'all dropping these beautiful scriptures, man. Just reminding me of just how beautiful they are, man. I got to share them again with the tribe, man. Because every time we read them now, it gets more and more relevant. It gets more and more energetic. It, it comes to life. And you see things happening today. You realize this is not a myth. This is not a marvel. But it is marvelous. <laughs> Second Baruch chapter 51. And it will happen, not may happen, it will happen. After this day which I appointed, 
is over, that both the shape of those who are found to be guilty. All right, I just want to focus on this day, right? Because there's a lot happening in this day. We got that day. Day, the days come, right? For that day is great. And it will happen after this day, which I appointed is over that both the shape of those who are found to be guilty, shape, my God. I'm seeing a lot of posts, especially on IG, about like these rich and famous people who now like are looking real bad and real ugly. You know, they're looking real ugly. The countenance is changing. They're looking real just old for no reason out of nowhere and just just real ugly real ugly you know they are found guilty I am appointed the day or excuse me it is it will happen after this day I appoint who the creator it's over that both the shape of those who are found to be guilty and also the splendor of those who have been, who have proved to be righteous will be changed. So the ugly is getting uglier. And the splendor or the beautiful is getting more beautiful. The, the righteous that are keeping the code, because that's the only way to be righteous, right? Exodus 20 got us in code. Rule number one, most high over everything. You get the hijack out the way. That's a large, gi gigantic step towards righteousness to be hijacked free, right? That puts you into a spiritual splendor. And the splendor of those who have been proved, who have proved to be righteous, will be changed. Take his play, play, look around, look around. Ugly is getting uglier, beautiful is getting more splendid more beautiful for the shape of those who now act wickedly <laughs> will be a <Wow. laughs> why will be made more evil than it is now so that they shall suffer torment oh those dog heads are going to start looking dog headed again yeah the dog heads coming back <laughs> Also, as for the honor and the splendor of those who have proved to be KTC righteous wow. on account of my Torah. Those who possess intelligence in their life. Wow. Knowledge is, is who? Big Mama, Proverbs chapter 8 says, knowledge is mine. Understanding is mine. Who possesses that Ama in their life? And those who planted the root of wisdom <laughs> in their heart. Let's go, mama. Their splendor, their honor. Did mama say she's going to take care of us, right? She said, you find me, you find life. Did mama say, you find me, you find life? Proverbs chapter 8. What did Solomon say about mama in Proverbs chapter 4? We got to get that again. We're talking about honor and splendor. We're talking about the fortification of a kingdom will then be magnified by transformation. And the shape of their face will be changed into the light and their beauty so that they may acquire and receive the un- dying world which is promised to them you don't die you multiply 
the shape of your face, my naga, will be changed into the light of your beauty so that you may acquire and receive the undying world which is promised to you. Psalms 89. The covenant of peace, the covenant of righteousness is with the kingdom of David. Dawid, King David. This is your promise, the promised land, when you're in cold. It's not promised when you're out of cold. Their honor and their splendor will be magnified by transformations, my Lord. So while the, mo while the evil is getting more ugly, more tormented, their shape is more evil. Your honor and splendor is magnified by transfer transformations. The shape of your face is changing to the light, my naga. So that you may receive the undying world, my naga, which is promised to you just like that land that we got in Jeremiah 30. We're talking about for at last the day is great. <laughs> I'm talking about your captivity being turned, man. I'm talking about returning to your land. We on a war path. Uh, uh. You got that water. <laughs> you got that water flow. And, and let's check on the fire, my nigga. Do, do we got the fire burning, man? <laughs> I got the fireplace up for a night. Hold up, man. Oh, man. I got you. I got you. We got that water flowing. We got that fire burning. We got that water flowing. Got that fire burning. I got you. They always try to hijack the fire. We got to put some more logs in the fire. Huh? That means we need the fire starter to put another log on it. A lot of water. Take a break, you know. It's Preston 130. We've been doing this a long time. <laughs> you know how we do. We about to go there, so take a nice deep breath through your nostrils, man. <laughs> and enjoy the way. Got that water, you got that fire, and you got them drops, man. <laughs> the con came through for you today, man. <laughs> Let's get it. I like to say a lot why for allowing us to make it this far, man, to ask the right questions, um, allowing us to empty our cups, you know, um, to make mistakes, man, to, you know, bounce back and to be in the eternal, you know, mercy and, and Ahab of our creator, you know what I mean, the patience to deal with us and all our trivial ways man and you know all the things we think we know but we don't know all the directions we think we should take but <laughs> we don't see clearly you know Hawaii's giving us a grace period <laughs> to see clearly and we still got a lot you know more light to shine but Hawaii said our face is going to turn into the light man and that code's going to be in our heart bone and you know we're going to get our land back. We're going to be in Shalom. We got our covenant of Shalom. So you made it here. We here. You meant to be here. Everything is in your favor now. Take your time and get it right. Be patient with each other. Be patient with me. Um, you know, be patient with, you know what I'm saying, your husbands, your wives, your, your sisters, your brothers, your best friends, your homies. I'm not going to be patient with your moms, your pops, your children. You know what I mean? Be patient with yourselves. Keep the water flowing. And you better keep that fire burning, man. Let's press the 133, man. We're on the warpath. We're on the warpath. Let's go.
You receiving the undying word, okay? Therefore, verse 4, especially they who will then come will be sad because they despise my Torah and stop their ears lest they hear wisdom and receive intelligence. When they therefore will see that those over whom they are exalted now will then be more exalted and, ma and magnified than they, man, Papa, no. Yeah, they're going to see a naga exalted, man. They're going to know who you are. It's written. <laughs> they will see those over whom they are exalted now will then be more exalted and magnified than they. Then both these and those will be changed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't let me start bringing up this dragonfly drop again, man, because that's what popped off the dragon drop was seeing these two dragonflies whirling around my backyard. They were just going in like circles, like just buzzing louder than I ever heard of dragonfly buzz, man. And we started researching dragonflies and it came out to being change. It, it represents renewal, right? Change, change, change. Dragonfly, change. Because the dragons, they get their wings in a very late stage of their lives. So by the time they're flying, they spend most of the time not flying. So by the time a dragonfly is flying, he's like, look at me, boss. I'm flying, boss. I've been changed. I got wings. Look at me. That's how it feels. That's how you feel right now to get your wings, to get your land back. You dig? These into the honor and splendor of Malachim high order the angels and those into startling visions so nagas and cold you know your splendor is, is that of the angels is, is that of the highest orders of the kings and queens but these wicked you know these entities right they're going to turn into these startling visions and horrible shapes Second brew 51, boss. And they will waste away even more. You see them getting older faster now, right? Somebody said they ran out of adrenochrome, man. Just research that because it's sickening and, and it hurts me to the core man, to even think about what they're doing to our children, man. How many Naga babies and, you know, how much of our children have gone missing, man, from the from the gator bait, you know, throwing our children to alligators, smashing them on walls, you know what I'm saying? Just all this stuff, man, it's sickening to my, to my core, man, you know what I mean? And, I, you know, this is when you just, you pray to Hawaii that this is a matrix, you know, so that, you know no one was really suffering for real. Like, you just pray that, you know what I'm saying? Because any other way, you just don't understand. Like, I just don't understand the extent to the suffering any other way, unless this is some type of, <laughs> what they call it, uh, simulation, man. So, Hawa says, only to the unwise do they seem to die. In the wisdom of Solomon, only to the unwise do they seem to die. That let me know enough. All right. Only to the unwise do we seem to die. We've been promised an undying world. Verse 6, for they will first see and then they will go away to be tormented. Miracles, however, will appear at their own time to those who are saved. Those who are saved. Who's going to save you? The blood of Jesus? Hawa said, but out of it he shall be saved. I will break his, his yoke from off your neck. I will burst your bands. Strangers shall no more jam you up and make you slaves. For lo, I will save you from afar. <laughs> I will save you you so 
So for those who are saved by Hawa, because you keep the code, because of their works, <laughs> for whom the Torah is now a hope, the Torah is your hope and intelligence, expectations, and wisdom. That's big mama is a trust. So now you got the breath and the security. For they shall see the world, which is now invisible to them. And they will see a time which is now hidden to them. What? Hey, y'all leave a comment, man. It's Preston 133. <laughs> y'all let me know about the world that's now invisible to you. And y'all let me know about the time which is now hidden to you. Y'all let me know what that means. And time will no longer make them older. Man, somebody said time didn't exist, right? R R R R. Second Baruch seventy three, right? We're just talking to prophets. Baruch, we're talking prophecy. Verse one, it will happen that after he has brought down everything which is in the world, again, alas, in that day, here we go. <coughs> Shalom. And has sat down in eternal Shalom. That's peace, right? On the throne of the kingdom. And then joy will be revealed and rest will appear. So you got joy and rest appear. So we're talking about paradise, right? And then health will descend and do. So instead of them spraying us with all these chemicals, right? Health will descend in do. I ain't talking direct energy weapon. <laughs> I'm talking about Hawaii's elements. Hawaii's healing. And illness will vanish, my nage. You, you, you like, how am I going to shake this? Illness will vanish. Health will descend like rain, man. Illness will vanish. Fear and tribulation and lamentation will pass away. Can I get a witness? Jeremiah 30. Yeah. And Jacob shall be again quiet and at ease and none shall make him afraid. Fear and tribulation and lamentation will pass away. From Jacob. Among men and joy will encompass the earth. See, white people want to jump around and say, Age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius. Stop it. I'm talking to Jacob. Hey, we're talking to Jacob. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. Fear not thou, Jacob, my servant, says Hawaii. I'm only talking to Israel right now. Age of Aquarius people, back up. Joy will encompass the earth for my children. And nobody again, nobody will again die on time. Nor will any adversity take place suddenly. Unjust judgment, condemnations, contentions, revenges, all that get back you want, man, keeping the score, all that revenge, all that blood, all that passion and zeal to hate will go into condemnation since they will be uprooted. You choose what you want to latch on to. You want to latch on to that get back? You want to latch on to judging on your own accord and condemning your brothers and sisters on your own accord and keeping all that contention on your fellow con? Huh? You want to latch on to them revenges forever? You don't want to let go. You don't want to forgive your brothers because they were invaded. They don't know no better, man. They've been, you know, sucking into this mentality of riding and protecting their hood and their block, not their land. They forgot to protect their land. They forgot to get revenge where revenge is due. But we on a warpath. 
they're going to be uprooted, boss. That frequency is going to be uprooted. But these are the things that have filled the earth with evil. Because of them, life of men came in yet greater confusion. Ain't nothing worse than a confused con, con. Ain't nothing worse than a contentious con with condemnations, con. You are confused. But in that day, oh boy. <laughs> In that day where joy will encompass the earth. And all these evils are getting uprooted. The wild beast, who they call wild, we don't call wild, right? <laughs> the OGs is what we call them. <laughs> will come from the wood. This is the year of the wood dragon, my night. <laughs> and serve men and women, right? And the asps. And the dragons, by night? Are dragons fake? I mean, why are they writing about them then? Why is Second Baruch talking about dragons? You could have said any other word. But ye said dragon. <laughs> the dragons will come out of their holes. Whoa. Where's the holes of the dragon? Where's the caves? <laughs> To subject themselves to the children, to a child. Every Naga got a dragon. They call them guardian angels. We call them guardian dragons. <laughs> Which one is more dependable to you? <laughs> a man with wings or a fire breathing dragon? We're going to get Psalm 18. And women will no longer, verse 7, women will no longer have pain when they bear, nor will they be tormented when they yield the fruits of their womb. No more pain. No more pain. That sounds like paradise. When joy encompasses the earth and the dragons come out of their holes to subject themselves to the children of Israel. To a child. No more untimely death. Hawaii has brought down everything which is in this world, man. Look at it falling. Look at it trembling. Look at these celebrities trembling. Hawaii is bringing us eternal shalom on the throne of the kingdom. Where joy is revealed and rest is appearing. Eternal shall it wow. Where strangers will no more make you their slaves. Where Hawa will burst your bands and break the yoke off your neck. I'm talking about a time where you will be saved out of trouble, Jacob. There is none like it. That day is great. When Hawa will return, you know. With that frequency, a why will save. I will save you from afar. How does Hawa save you, my naga, from afar? It happens when you serve the creator. You keep the cold. It happens when you serve your kanda, we, who is the one shepherd forever, Ezekiel 34 and Ezekiel 37. And Jeremiah 30. <laughs> and Hosea 3. <laughs> and Psalm 89. Talking covenant of David. Covenant with David. The covenant of Shalom. Covenant of the righteous. A wise our savior. There is no other. We're talking eternal. Shalom. We ain't afraid no more man. For I am with you, says a while, to save you. I will make a full end of the nations where I've scattered you. I will make, I will not make an end of you. They say we mixed out. <laughs> I will not make an end of you. I will correct you in measure. But 
I will not utterly destroy you. Come on, man. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> I'm your I'm your power, for thus says of why. Your hurt is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. None deemeth of your wound that it may be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you, Israel. They seek you not. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the greatness of your iniquity, because your sins were increased. All your idols, why cries thou for your hurt, that your pain is incurable for the greatness of your iniquity, because of your sins, your sins were increased. I have done these things unto you. Therefore, all they that devour you shall be devoured, and all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil you shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon you will I give for a prey, for I will restore health unto you. Come. Wow, we're talking about the healing do, right? We're talking about the healing do. We're talking about a time where you no longer be older because time <laughs> is now on your side. You'll see a time which is now heading to there. Or pain. Health will descend and a do and illness will vanish. Fear and tribulation passing away. Health will descend and do, for I will restore health unto you. Health will descend and do, for I will restore health unto you. And I will heal you of your wounds, says the why. Because they have called you an outcast. She is Zion. There is none that careth for her. Thus says the why. Behold, I will turn the captivity of Jacob's tents. Whose tent? Jacob's tent. And have compassion on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own mound and the pla and the palace shall be inhabited upon its wanted place and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving the real thanksgiving I ain't talking no pilgrims man I'm talking about thanksgiving shall proceed in the voice of them that make merry I ain't talking about no Merry Christmas <laughs> I'm talking about joy, man. I will multiply them, and they shall not be diminished. I will also increase them, and they shall not dwindle away. Their children shall be as aforetime, just like before their children shall be, and their congregation shall be established before me. Not JC. Awa. And I will punish all that oppress them. That's why the hijack is shook in their boots and freaking out with all these signs. And they're dismayed at the comments. They're dismayed at all these signs from the creator. Because I will punish all that oppress them. And their prince shall be of themselves. And their ruler shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is he that hath pledged his heart to approach unto me? Why? Wow. For who is he that hath pledged his heart? Who put it in their heart bone that they're going to approach me? Says Hawa. And you shall be 
my people and I will be your power. Behold, a storm of Hawa has gone forth in fury. Have you ever seen a storm of Hawa go forth in fury? A sweeping storm. It shall whirl upon the head of the wicked. You ever see that before? The fierce anger of Hawa. Have you seen that before? <laughs> shall not return until he has executed until he has performed the purposes of his heart in the end of days you shall consider it in the days remind me of Hosea 3 latter days right same thing seeking Hawa serving Hawa and David right multiple witnesses End of days sounds just like latter days, right? His goodness in the end of days. <clears throat> Let's go. Popping off for y'all, man. I got y'all. This is very necessary, very important. A beautiful y'all pop message for the tribe, man, for all of us. Let's go. For the children of Israel, says it's solitary. That's what we're talking about. But now the yoke is being broke, right? But you've been solitary many days without a king. So when we talk king, when we talk Khan, that sounds foreign to us because we, we're used to hearing president, vice president. <laughs> Princess, we forgot about our royal story, our heritage. Yeah. You don't need your sacrifices. You don't need all your priestly things, your ephod, your teraphim. But afterwards, Shall the children of Israel return? Here we go again. I will burst your bands. Right? <laughs> Jeremiah, seek uh, a wah and David, whom I will raise up unto them. So afterwards, the children of Israel shall return. Seek the Creator. Keep the code. Keep the commandment. Seek the Creator. Afterwards shall the children of Israel seek the creator and David their king. So why are so many prophets telling us to seek Hawa first, David second? Christianity says to seek Jesus first and through the son you get to the father. <laughs> so Jesus first, creator second, and then these harlots with their blasphemy ways, say the Creator is Jesus. Yahawashai is the Creator to them because Jesus is, is Lord, right? Now they are on blasphemy, right? So come on, man. Most of everything, they have it in reverse. You don't go to the Son and get to the Father. You go to the Father, you go to the Creator to get to the Son. <laughs> Why would I say son, boss? Psalm 89. You go through the father to get to the son. Oh, yeah. Psalm 89, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Forever will I establish your seed and build up your throne to all generations. We're talking Dawi, for thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn is exalted. They're talking to the Creator, 
For of Hawa is our shield. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Then thou spokest in vision to thy godly ones, the righteous, and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David, my servant. Now we're talking David. So, of course, you go through Hawa, right? You keep the cold. You rejoice. The glory of Hawa's strength. Hawa is our shield. Hawa is our savior. Hawa is our king. Now, what Khan, what priest did Hawa put forever for the tribe, right? I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact from him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. I will beat to pieces his adversaries before him and smite them that hate him. When did we see this before, right? And why do they call him? Why are we saying go through the father to get to the son? Not the opposite, not the other way around. You don't go through the son to get to the father. You go to the creator over and over again. You seek a while. You seek the code. You start to listen. You start to hearken to the commandments. Then you get your shepherd. Then you see Kandawi, who is the king, who is the Khan, who is the servant of Hawa, whom Hawa's own oil has anointed. What other king can say this? <laughs> Who my hand has established, what other king can say this? My arm shall strengthen him. What else? I will set his head also on the sea. Back it up. My faithfulness, my mercy shall be with him. You want faithfulness? You want mercy? Verse 25, and through my name, Hawa's name, not the name of Jesus. That's why the name is so important. That's why you do not use the name in vain. Because through my name shall his horn, his dragon, <laughs> be exalted. And I will set his hand also on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. Don't they say, Preston John controlled the flow of the Nile River? He shall call unto me, thou art my father, my God, my rock, the rock of my salvation. Who is your savior? Hawa. I will appoint him first born. Ba, highest of the kings of the earth. Highest of the kings of the earth. Higher than the Pope. This is the highest station. The highest title is the Preston. The Dawi, the first born. Appointed and anointed. Highest of the kings of the earth. <laughs> so he's firstborn son. He's firstborn bond. You go through the father. <laughs> To get to the bond, to get to the son, my naga. You don't go through David to get to the creator. You go through, you listen to the creator. The creator gives you a shepherd. And this shepherd is anointed by Hawa, whom Hawa's hand is established. <laughs> where Hawa is the rock, where Hawa is the salvation, where Hawa has appointed a firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. Forever will I keep for him my mercy. You want mercy from the creator? My covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed will I make to endure forever as his throne as the days of heaven. Oh, but if his children don't listen, man, you don't want to keep the cold. You want to walk in my ordinances? You want to profane my statues? Because Jesus came. Now you don't have to keep Shabbat. 
Because Jesus came. Now you don't have to be most high over everything. Because Jesus came. Now you can kill and steal at will and bear false witness. You don't want to keep my commandments, Exodus 20? Then I will visit their transgression with the rod like any good parent would do. And iniquity with the strokes like any good parent would do. Because you don't want to listen. Because you want to forsake the law of the house. But my mercy will I not break off from him. Yeah, we got that mercy. All praise of why. Because <laughs> forever will I keep my mercy. For him. Ooh. Highest of the king of the earth. First born. <laughs> We're just talking David, man. My covenant will I not profane. So I already said it. He ain't going back on it. Nor alter that which is gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness. Surely I will not be false unto David. Because David's seed shall endure forever. They say we washed out. They say we mixed out. His seed shall endure forever in his throne as the sun before me, and I will be established. It shall be established a lot forever as the moon and be steadfast as a witness in the sky. First born by. Yeah, they don't want to see a wild pop off. You know, we, we've seen that before, right? You see a beat the pieces, the adversaries that die we. You see a smite them that hate David. Psalms 18. Talk to die we. He had to be delivered. He had to be saved firsthand from, you know, the creator. Because the enemies, the hand of Saul, <laughs> hey, they had him uh, you know, hijack city, you know, had him pinned in, man. David didn't know what to do. And he said, I love you, oh, Hawa, my strength. Awah is my rock, <laughs> my fortress, my deliverer. Is he praying to Jesus? Nah. He's talking to the Creator. We should always talk directly to the Creator. My rock, my power, in him I take refuge. My shield, my horn of salvation, my high tower, praise I cry, is a why I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death come past me, the floods of Belial assailed me, the cords of Sheol surrounded me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon a why and cried unto my power. Out of his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came before him unto his ears. Then the earth did shake and quake. The foundations also <laughs> did tremble. The mountains did tremble. They were shaken because he was wroth. Smoke arose from his nostrils. Fire out of his mouth. So now you know what it's like when Hawa pops off directly for you. When Hawa says, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to smite your enemies. I'm going to beat your adversaries into pieces. Fire comes out of Hawa's mouth. Smoke comes out of Hawa's nostrils. In my distress, I called unto Hawa. So this is who we're talking about. I cried unto my God, my power. <laughs> he heard me with his ears. 
Everything started quaking. Mountains trembled. Foundations were shaking. <sighs> now we got smoke. Now we got fire. What does that sound like out of his mouth? What does that sound like? <laughs> Coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens also and came down thick darkness under his feet. And he rolled upon a chair and did fly. So he's flying, breathing fire out of his mouth. <laughs> and he did swoop down upon the wings of the wind. <sighs> and he made darkness his hiding place. What does that sound like? <laughs> his pavilion round about him. Darkness of waters. Thick cloud. Sound like a dragon lair, man. <laughs> it sound like a dragon lair. At the brightness before him, there passed through his thick clouds, hailstones and coals of fire. A wah also thundered in the heaven. And the Most High gave forth his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. This is when Hawa smites your enemies. He said, I'll come back with that fire this time around, right? <laughs> and here we are in the year of the dragon. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. sent out his arrows of fire. <laughs> Scattered them, he shot forth lightnings of fire, discomforted them, and the channels of water appeared, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your rebuke, Hawa, at the blast of breath of that fire, of that fire out of his mouth, at the blast of that breath, man. Of his nostrils, his smoky nostrils, he sent from on high and took me. He drew me out of many waters. This is what a wide. This is what a wide do to Hawaii's chosen man. Sent from on high, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my enemy, most strong, and then them that hated me. For they were too mighty for me. We still got that fire burning, man. We still got that fire burning. Okay. Wow. 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 Hawaii comes with fire out of his mouth, smoke out of his nose to deliver King David. And this is the relationship you're always supposed to have with your supreme power. You don't be hijacked and go through the sun to get to the father. You go directly to your creator. So your creator comes in battle for him and says, I will save you. And once you've been listening, you get you a shepherd. To guide you, my nagas, to guide, to put you in the right path, man. You ever heard of Princess Joseph of Rubani, Gadi, and Mani, my nag? Let's go. Doing a little vibe, a little vibe check, man. Making sure <laughs> we got everything we need up here for the disc, man. <laughs> nah, we just getting started. Oh yeah, yeah. I went deep in this uh, <laughs> on this ether pack. I started pulling up all kinds of drops from ether pack that I forgot about. Not this link, cause I always think about this link, but there's a lot of other links we gonna get. That uh, it's, it's perfect timing, man, because we've been talking a lot about Jeremiah, you know, <laughs> Afghan. Oh, 
Oh, this got some Scythian drop. Because we're going to talk some Scythians, some Amazons as well. Ooh, look how we belly flop. <laughs> We're talking about the Hebrew and Arabic all the way to the end in the 15th century. This book is by the, the author is Robert Grisham, Medieval Empire of the Israelites. Get it on your ether packs. If you need an ether pack, if you haven't got it for any reason, please let me know. My dog, I'm get it to you right away. Uh, email me 432 the drop at gmail.com and just let me know because, you know, we're going to keep having more and more. We got like so much to put on some new packs and all that so look out for us we're talking arabic or the a rabbi proper go get the drop let's go the root of the word arab is rob or rob they put the v but you know we're talking to rob the the bat the bet and the preview prefix a at the beginning is a hebrew attributive term same as the greek although the transcription also has changed since up to the onset of the printing period, spelling was unrestricted everywhere. The word rabbi orig originated from the root rav, the biblical rule bed, and many other ideas. Ooh. And that Reuben flow, I mean, that goes deep when you kind of understand. I mean, wasn't Reuben supposed to, you know, initially have some type of priestly type station, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but let's go, let's go. <laughs> we just belly flop <laughs> into the rabbi. Oh, woo, we're talking Bezantine. That's crazy because I want to talk Bezantine. 1453 is <laughs> when the Byzantine Empire fell. 1452 is the Doom Dog versus Papal Woo. What is the fall? Of the Byzantine have to do with the Doom versus 1452. Maybe the Byzantine before uh, 1453. <laughs> Maybe the Byzantine or the Mazaka or the Cappadocia has everything to do with the fall of the Hebrew. The Romani. Remember this day, 1453 Byzantine, man. Okay, I'm just belly flopping. I was just thinking about Afghan and stuff, you know. <laughs> now, uh, Belly flop. I'm literally just belly flop. All right, so press the jaw. Press the jaw. Now the Vatu is the Bati. That can mean Batu, like Batu Khan, or the Baat, like the house in Hebrew, the Baat. House of the Khan is the original Vatican. John's kingdom is named the Empire of the Great Khan in mysterious and miraculous stories. That is the Khan father. So before they had the Godfather, <laughs> Preston John is the Khan father in Slavic Bati Khan or Vatican, who sits in the center of the world. My naga, I can't make this up. I can't make this up. According to the descriptions of Marco Polo, Hayton. Manderville, Giovanni, De Plano, Carpinia, and others. Everybody talking Preston John. Everybody talking about John's kingdom. Everybody talking about the Preston. All these, all these guys talking about the Preston. He was understood as an all-powerful. <laughs> so you didn't need Jesus. <laughs> you already had an all-powerful one. Jesus says in Matthew 28, all power has been given to me. Stop it. Stop it, JC. Stop it, Hijack. Prester John never gave you all power. The creator definitely never gave you all power because there's already an anointed one shepherd forever. Ezekiel 37, Hosea 3, Jeremiah 30. So you're going against everything in the Tanakh for you to draw all power when it's already been given. And David got the con. And this Batu 
This house of God has everything to do with David. The power comes from the creator. All-powerful sovereign of a huge country as a wise and happy monarch or king, which fully corresponds to our version. The main conclusion is the idea of the grail is the idea of imperial power. Preston John is the grail. <laughs> oh yeah. The symbol of the grail is a symbol of authority and the traditions which are inherited, not just stolen, inherited by your heritage. It is your birthright. This grail, this symbol, this function is your birthright. It is part and parcel of the legendary Prester John. The legend of whom was spread widely in the Middle Ages. John was the master of a huge empire. He was omnipotent and all-powerful. Kings and czars were for him only subjects. My naga, this is the highest. Press the child. <laughs> it's the highest title you can have on earth. Back to Psalms 89, right? I mean, you're talking about the covenant. You're talking about the anointed one. You're talking about firstborn, right? And this is why Hawa comes with that blast of fire out of his nostrils. Fire out of his mouth, right? You don't get a higher station because to be firstborn, my naga, David, I also will appoint him firstborn. To be firstborn is to be the highest of the kings of the earth, God. Press the job. Where kings and czars were for him only subjects. Tracticus Paul Kermiris, Kerimis calls John the king of kings, Rex Regna. Highest of the kings of the earth, it says in Psalms 89, verse 28. Firstborn, I will appoint him firstborn. Highest of the kings of the earth. Press the John is king of kings, Rex Regnum or Rex Negus. He combines in himself spiritual and secular authority. So move over, JC. <laughs> you got one that is Khan of Khans, firstborn by highest <laughs> of the kings of the earth with the covenant of Hawa. Stands fast with him and the seed of David endures forever as the throne as the days in heaven. Highest of the kings of the earth. Firstborn, my life. He got spiritual and secular authority, and he can say about himself, Press to John by Hawaii's grace, Lord of all lords who only are beneath heaven from the rising of the sun to paradise on earth. If the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, then paradise must be in the west. <laughs> well, you know, the far, the far Orient when they flip the map. <laughs> Press the child controls and holds back the tribes of Gog and Magog. Sounds biblical to you and controls the seen and unseen worlds. Sounds biblical to you. <sighs> Lord of all lords, king of all kings, firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. So 
did you know Jeremiah is the grandson of King Saul? And if Jeremiah is Saul's grandson, this is why Jeremiah feels so close to David. Got to get back on these ruses, man. <laughs> the ruses are always going to connect with the cons. I'm just belly flopping, man. I love this document every time. <coughs> it just gets uh, more and more clear. And, you know, when you dig on Anatoly for the man gold, and you start putting the timeline back together, you can you can weave through the Russian history, the Mongol history, connect it right back with Babylon, <laughs> the Biblios, connect it right back with the Promised Land, and all roads lead right back to India Superior, my life. It's a lot of drop in here, man. I'm just <laughs> belly flopping, enjoying the flow. But wow, we got a lot to. Ooh, we just belly flopping to the Ethiopian, the ghost, king of kings. I can't make this stuff up. Lion of the tribe of Judah. That is, according to tradition, one of the 12 grandsons of Abraham, the ancestor of the 12 tribes of Israel. Judah first made the lion a symbol of royal authority. So the practice of that time is reflected in that legend. Like, I can't make it up, man. This is how we belly flop around here. <laughs> oh, woo, we got to start digging on this kish, man. You know, we did a whole drop on this, and we said, is it Kish or is it Kush? Man, one letter rule with this Kishness of things open again, you know, fresh perspective. Who's Kish, man? Back it up. <laughs> again, Jeremiah, man. So when we dig on Jeremiah 30, right, and it says, whom I will raise up. But they shall serve a while their power, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Why is, why is Jeremiah, you know, feel like he could talk like this on David? What's the probability that this is the same Jeremiah? And the reason why he's able to prophesy it on David the Khan? It's because Jeremiah was right there in the house of David to come. Because Jeremiah is none other than who? The adherents of this version maintain that King Saul, Shaul, had a son, Jeremiah. So Shalak, Jeremiah is not the grandson of King Saul. He's the son of King Saul. Just like we didn't really know Daniel or kill it in the Bible, the book of Daniel. Daniel is the son of King David, who is being, you know, held hostage by Nebuchadnezzar or Genghis Khan, you know, <laughs> Shalemanazar. <laughs> so all these names, all these titles, Jeremiah is the son of Saul. Jeremiah is the son of Saul. That's why Jeremiah can talk on David. 
<laughs> and I told you for the man called, put the timeline back together, my nugget. So Jeremiah, son of Saul, who also had a son named Afghan. This brought us to the Arab propers and Arab pretenders. And who's speaking Arabic first? <laughs> and what's this Arab all about? When the Rab is just a rabbi, and the rabbi is a law keeper. So the original Arabs are Hebrews. And Afghan, Afghanistan is a Hebrew nation because Afghan is the grandson of King Saul. So the Afghanistan, so the original Afghanis are Benjamites. Jeremiah died approximately at the same time as his father Saul. Afghan has secured a high position in the rule of King David. So Jeremiah's son is who got a high position in the house of David. I mean, all this close-knit familyness. this is why Jeremiah <laughs> can talk on David. David, whom I will raise up unto them. Because Jeremiah, his own son, had a high position in the rule of King David and remained at the royal court during the rule of Solomon. So even David's bond, Solomon, he still kept the code with Saul's heritage. You know what I'm saying? His sons, his grandchildren were still protected because David and obviously uh, David and Jonathan, best friends, you know, protected each other. And Jonathan, son of Saul, is the son we know. And David always swore that he'll always protect Jonathan's peoples, man. You know what I'm saying? And he never really wanted no smoke like that with Saul. It's just that Saul wasn't keeping the coat. And then Israel wanted to be delivered, right? And here comes a course correction, right? Here comes a calm. Here comes David. Afghanistan had a high position in the house and the rule of King David. He remained at the royal court in the court of David during the rule of Solomon. 400 years later, during the troubles in Israel, the Afghan family resettled in the province of Gur. Now we heard about all that Gurkhan flow, right? The Gurkhan. Well, that's connected still to the Afghan family. Now the center of Afghanistan. They stayed here to live and went into trade. With the arrival of Islam, arrival of Islam. So Islam had to arrive in the Middle East. <laughs> Islam had to arrive, you know, to these Israelites, right? On these lands, seven represent representatives of the Jews or the Hebrews who lived in Gur, headed by their leader, Kish, appealed to the prophet Muhammad. Now, Kish is the father, I believe, of King Saul. So Saul's father, Kish, <laughs> had this run-in with the Islam prophet Muhammad. Now, this can't be your prophet if you're not a Muhammadan. You know, if you're, if you're an Israelite, right? <laughs> if you're an Ibaru, a Hasharah, Yasharala, right? We have prophets of Israel that are for the Israelites. But Moab and them, <laughs> they got their own prophets, right? So they had to make them arrive at your gates. The prophet rewarded them. What prophet? Muhammad rewarded them. And the Jewish name Kish was changed by Muhammad to the name Arab Arashi. And we did a whole drop on this. And we said, huh? So we can recon Arab al-Rashi, and even though they're in the Mohammedan, or they're, they're under this Islam flow, they still are, are hard hit to connect us back to the tribe of Israel, back to the tribe of Benjamin, back to the tribes of Jeremiah, King Saul. 
in Afghanistan. And Kish, who was Saul's father, his name or the name of his tribe was changed to Arab or a rabbi, Arashid. So they represented King Saul's father, Kish. And afterwards, Arab Arashid received instructions to spread Islam among his people. Whose people? Arab Arashid's people. Who's that? Kish, my naga. This is part of what King Saul had to deal with when his with his idolatry. His own father, his own father had turned <laughs> had turned coat on a naga and started pushing Islam. On the Benjamites. You see, <laughs> it's a more and more war after all. And why would they have to push Islam on Israelites? Why would they have to push Christianity on Israelites? And are they both working together? To hijack us and take over the promised land. Is all that one thing. Because they had to spread Christianity and spread Islam. I don't hear them spreading the code, the commandments of Hawaii. I don't hear them spreading the Hebrew Hebrewism. No, they're spreading Judaism, right? The study of Judah, Judaism. They're not Judah, they're Jewish, right? They're spreading Islam on the tribe of Benjamin that's supposed to be in code with their creator forever. That has David as one shepherd forever. The Prester, the same David that Afghan held a high position in the rule of King David. And he remained in the royal court during the rule of Solomon. Raises back to Antioch, <laughs> son of David. And to the timeline, it brings us right around the 700s, which is all good because we're used to the 700s around here. Let's go. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Say it with me, God, Kalelu. Let's get it. <coughs> Shala, let's go. I got y'all. Let me get my high quality H2O. Have you heard of Kalei Luz? Come on, come on. Let's go quickly. Let's go quickly. I'm about to do some rapid fire like you've never seen it before. We got a lot to dig and get in in the next, you know, in the next few. Right? So, of course, you heard of uh, Dan, David Lowe for Ben Histories of America. This is off the Michael Rourke blog. Kalei Luz, another ancient Jewish colony in America. Right? So, we got some of this before right we got these artifacts that were found in arizona in the 1920s the tucson in tucson arizona were found objects and writings in latin greek and hebrew what you found hebrew in arizona wow. why with both catholic and jewish ritual objects wait you found hebrew with hebrew Ritual objects and symbols in Arizona in the 20s. This is before G.E. Kincaid discovered the Grand Canyon. A lot of discoveries in the 20s and 30s, just like Worlds Beyond the Poles. Maybe we'll get it for a dismount. Cyclone Covey, go get that book. Kalelus by Cyclone Covey describes this, this discovery in his book, Kalelus, a Roman Jewish colony in America. Well, 
you know they don't got no Jew-ish in America in the 700s, because we're talking 700s, 700s, which is the what? Eighth century. Let's stay in the eighth century since they want to stay in the eighth century, boss. And then we're going to skip around like Anatoly Fomenko tells us to with the three major chronological time shifts. Either they're going to shift our history back 333 years, 1,054 years, or 1,778 years. Those are the major chronological time shifts. And there's a bunch of minor ones. So they can shift something back 1,778 years, damn near 1,800 years. That means they can take King David and put him in the B.C.s. And when you add the 1,000 years back, you might get 8th century. When you add the 1,800 years back, damn, now you're back in the 15, 1600s, man. And it's all happening. Right now, you got the cool set. <laughs> you got everything, right? So, Anon, just like Ania, right? Or Hanan, or Kanan, son of David. And he said, Well, that's not crazy. I know another Hanan, son of David. I'm talking 8th century. We know Hanas, we know Kanas, we know Anias. Hanan ben David, we call him a Persian Jew, founder of the Ananites, an anti -rabbin rabbinical order, which means these fake rabbis, they were anti these fake rabbis. This Judaisms, they were anti the Jew, they were anti the isms, they were anti the issues. They kept Torah. <laughs> they weren't rocking with no JCs and no other saviors. God. Anon seems to have become a prominent in the 760s. Remember that day, 760s CE, when he competed with his younger brother for the office of Axelar. And then we got all that David Axelar flow, right? And Roger here, Roger Chola flow, right? Wave servers, you already know. So they say Anon we remember Kana or Hana, right? You talking about David, you talking about Prester John. Now you had this Anam and David, he's battling for the Exilarch. The Exilarch means the leaders during this, uh, you know, exile of the Hebrew. So which one, right? You're talking about the Prester, who would also be a David. This Prester, he's the husband of Lady Hannah of Babylon. He matches up in the genie.com. This Preston, this Roger here, Roger Chola. With David the First. Who's also the husband of Hannah. 
So the Queen Anne is connecting all the duplicates, phantoms. We were, we're consolidating <laughs> all this husband of Hannah business because it's a hard hit. This Hannah is a lady Amazon queen. Hi, Amazon queen. You dig? She is Anna. They also say Moses' mother is named Anna, right? In the Quran. Okay. <laughs> it's Moses David. Advanced wave service. We'll pick that up. Is Moses David. But let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just saying. David and Moses combined seem to have a Prester John type of quality. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The magic, the magic, all that stuff, right? So, so this David, he's the husband of Hannah. Got it. Okay. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, Roger here, Roger. Chola. He's also husband of Lady Hannah. Same Lady Hannah, 1200, same time frame. So, like many other ways we connect in it, we see clearly that Preston John is David. And they call him here David the First. Let's see what else we got here. They may call him something like, uh, just like they have Jadaron right here. Jadaron. They may call him Prince Jadaron of the Islands. Now you could talk the Elanians and the Osets. But either way, you're still talking David Sauslin. David Sauslin is the same David Sauslin <laughs> that this Jadaron here is the father of Axelar David the Sixth Sauslin. Y'all tell me, is it play play? Husband of Princess Rusadan of Georgia. See, now we're getting somewhere. And that brings us into the Queens of Georgia. Georgia, Georgia on my mind. King Consort David Sauce. Now, this is going to connect you to the Princess Rusadan of Georgia. It's going to connect you to the Lady Tamar, Queen Tamar, right? Who has her love story with David Sauslin, right? She was supposed to be married to this Yuri. And wow. Yuri ended up being a hijack. So David helped, you know, um, you know, rescue her out of the situation with this Yuri, Yuri flow. But in the Bible, it would say that um, instead of it saying what happened was that, you know, Yuri literally tried to take over the kingdom and made some type of military coup. In the Bible, they say King David killed a man, Uriah, or Uriah, one of David's mighty men. <laughs> wow, wow. And he was this righteous, mighty man that was killed because David was lusting for his woman, uh, Sheba. Now, Sheba's a title, Bathsheba is a title, Bahat of Sheba, House of Sheba, is this Lady Hannah, is this Princess Rusadan. Or Tamar is also a Sheba. We we dug on that. We got links literally calling Tamar Sheba. So Okay, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting excited. <sighs> getting excited. Let's go back. So David Sauce <laughs> is the son of Jadaron, king of the islands. David Sauce <laughs> is the son of Raja Hiraja Chola, Jadaron. Uh, OK. 
okay, 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 okay. Husband of Lady Anna, just like Dawi. Where we get Dawi? David the First. Who they call Dewey. Dodi, like Dodecahedra. The Raiden King, right? Like Rhoda, like the Kingdom of Rhoda. Back to the Arizona flow. King of Rabadi Gadimadi, Ruben Gamanasa. Doesn't necessarily mean that he is a Rubenite or Gadite or Manassehite, <laughs> but King David is the king of the northern and southern tribes. So when you talk David the first, you're talking the husband of Lady Hannah, okay? When you talk uh, Raja here, Raja Chola, you're talking the husband of Lady Hannah, right? When you talk. the other one here. I mean, hard hit after hard hit. We can start connecting the dots, man. And Roger Roger's son is Hana. Okay. We're going to get back on the islands. I'm just bringing it to the Hana. Because they add the H's and they add the C's. Just like this Anan. <laughs> Anna, just like Anan Ben David. Back to the Axelarks. We're still talking Axelarks. These are all the hard hits in the timeline because remember they talk Persians, right? <laughs> and here we go. We're still talking Babylon, Persia. Again, three major chronological time shifts. They shifted a thousand years. So you could put the thousand years back. Now you're back in the 1200s, right? Now we back in the 1200s. Just like David the first, 1200. Just like Hanan's father. <laughs> and right here, 1222. Roger and Roger. Hanan, Jewish king. <laughs> Hebrew king of time. Anani, let's get it bigger. So it can be Anna or Anani, Hana, right? <laughs> or Kana. And that's when we said again and again and again. Repetition breaks the spell. Choose your Canaan. We're still talking Axelarks. Hebrew Khans, Nathan Ben Kana. <laughs> It's the same as Anion. It's the same as Hanan Manak. It's the same Anon Ben David. Hanan Kana Anna. Anna, Hana, Hana, son of Prester Child, is Ania. Whether you put the C, hard C, H or A, you can't hide it from us no more, man. We're talking Babylon and Georgia, right? We're talking America. We're talking Abraham, we're talking David, we're talking Canaan's, <laughs> we're talking Canaan, and we're not talking the Canaan from the 
uh, loins of ham. We're talking the cana, the canine of the loins of shim. Duplications, right? Choose your canine. Choose your hanan, choose your ania. And we started seeing anion all on the maps. Anion Regnum Map California. Oh, wow. When you see Anion, you see Quivera. Quivera is Kieber. So we spell it with a Q or a K. We got Kieber, Quivera. You remember this, right? Wave Cypress. All right, all right. You see Anion Regnum, America, Managa. <laughs> yeah. You see Quivera Regnum. Just like we got in the. Medieval Empire of Israelites. You're talking to Rex Regnum, right? Rex Negus, Rex Regnum. You got Tan Duke, which is Tangu. Remember the Tangu drop from They got it on the other side of the Strait of Anion this time. Interesting, right? But Tan Duke is Tangu, same thing. So where's the press to sit? Over here, over there, either way. He's holding down Anion, which they turn later to Arnon and research the importance of the Arnon River and the boundaries of Moab and them. You see the importance of the Strait of Arnon or Anion. <laughs> America, my naga, is Anion. And Quivera or Kibera or Ibera, the original Iberia, the original Iberia, Kibera, Kiveria, House of Eber, House of Anan, Hanan, son of Prestija, <laughs> brother of David Sauce, on the maps. Let's go. On the maps, Ania. One letter rule, right? But the Nagas doing Naga things, dragons doing dragon things. Straight of Ania. This is off the coast of California, all the way up to the Bering Strait situation. Right? <laughs> Quiveria, again, is Kiveria, or Heber, Eber, Ania. Let's go. Ania, David Rumsey map collection. We're just lining all our anions up right quick. So, just maps, man. <laughs> 1500s, maps, 14, whatever we're getting. When we zoom in, North and South America, and again, there ain't no cap on an Arctic's chest bone. You don't see no ice. No ice, no ice. And outside that wall with no ice. But nice birds and animals. Oh, the press is kicking it. Any So the relationship between the new Spanish discoveries and the Terra Nova and the Asian continent, where Asia was not yet fathomed. They can't even fathom where Asia is. But all of Marco Polo's kingdoms were placed close at hand in the Northwest, ready to be absorbed by forthcoming expeditions, developing the idea a little further. After the discovery of the mainland north of the Isthmus, 
We find the maker of the MS map illustrated in outline has placed Prester John and his hijack city neighbors. They're the ones that's been jamming up David the whole time. Not very far from Mexico. Let's talk about 1530s. You don't see no North America boss. India Superior. Ania. This is the mythical straits of Ania. So they, they turn everything into a myth now, boss. But we're just talking to Nam Ben David, man. We're talking 700s. We're talking 8th century. Where Nam Ben David flourished 8th century was a Persian Jew. Or we're talking about a Hebrew Israelite. Founder of the Ananites or the Kana or the Canaan Kana, uh oh, an anti rabbinical order from which the still existing Karyat religious movements develop. And you dig on these Karyats today, they still don't be rocking with a whole lot of hijack, right? They, even in the hijack form of the Kara, we're talking Kara Katai. Now it's called the Karyite. Anand seems to have become prominent in the 760s when he competed with his younger brother for the office of Exilar. Back to the Exilars. Head of the Jews. Head of the Hebrews of the Babylonian exile. We're still talking Persia now. Right? The office was a hereditary one. Needing the confirmation of the ruling Caliph, which in Daniel's case, <laughs> since Anon was beefing with his bro Daniel, uh, you know, in history, the ruling Caliph would have been Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar gave Daniel the title Exilarch and made him a high station, but the tribe didn't really respect that because they didn't respect no ruling Caliph. They only saw Hawa as their ruler, right? So they said, nah, man, you, you can't appoint our rulers for us, hijack. Uh, King of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, you can't tell us who our ruler is. So although Daniel was rightfully raised to I station because he's the son of David, <laughs> but the other, you know, members of the tribe outside that were still in the streets, they had their own exilar, right? So this became this competition. Because, wow. <laughs> you know, Anah failed to obtain the confirmation from Nebuchadnezzar, let's just say, right? <laughs> so. He therefore declared himself anti exilar Dang. An action that caused him to be jailed by the civil authorities. Well, who's that? That's the rulers of Babylon, right? That's like the police putting you in jail because you don't accept what they say. At his trial, Anand pleaded that the caliph had confirmed his brother as head of one religion, but he, Anand, had founded a new religion one with similarities to Islam. Now, this is a bunch of conj, actually, because we just saw how they brought Islam to the doorsteps of the Hebrews when we talk about, um, you know, Saul, when we talk about Jeremiah, when we talk about Afghana, we talk about Kish, Saul's dad. As a result, he was released and given government protection. All right. So in 770, Anand wrote the definitive code of his order. So this son of David wrote the code, the Sefer Hamas Wall, Book of Precepts. And we say, whoa, that sounds familiar. 
the Sefer Ham as well. Yeah. <laughs> but now they say that it was written by Rabbi Moshe, Ben Mama, son of Rambam, right? <laughs> Which sounds like Amram. Moses' dad is Amram. Okay. And this Moshe is the son of Rambam. <laughs> okay. And he wrote the code. <laughs> And this is like he wrote it in the 1200s, and Davis Bond Anand wrote it in the 700s. And it's back to the chronological time shifts. And it also gives us another hard hit as to is Moses Dawi? <laughs> or do all these cons just write their own version of the code, or have to write the code to prove that they're real cons? You know, you tell me, but. I mean, just looking at it, you got a Naaman David, right? Founder of the Karia, or we just talking Kara Kata. Ananias. You got Daniel. <laughs> Al cool me. See what does cool mean in Hebrew? Ka on cool that means to rise, right? So we're talking about the one that rises, Daniel. And this Daniel Kamisi could be the same Daniel that is the son of Prester John David, who is Killian. Also known as Daniel. Second son of David, king of Israel, who is one of the four ancient Israelites who died without any sin, man. Benjamin, Jesse, who is um, David's dad, and Amram, which is Moses' dad. But now we want to talk Rambam, right? Because that's Mama Nides' pops. And when you get to Moses' Mama Nides, You get a whole drop on Moses, Mama Nides, right? We did a drop called the Three Moseses. Remember that? Sephardic, Spanish origin. All right, all right. Lived and worked in Egypt. His Hebrew name was Moshe. Ooh, best dismount of all time. <laughs> okay, okay. And apparently he wrote the code. The Mishnah Torah is his word. And that sounds like a duplicate of Moses in the five books of the Bible, right? But look at all the volumes this Moses wrote. All these books, Sephers, all these books, <laughs> cleanliness, offerings, divine service, seed, separation, holiness, women, times, love, knowledge, acquisition, righteousness. Rights, judgments, cleanliness, injuries. The Sefer Hamas Woe is the book of the commandments listing all 613 men's vote. And we started doing drops on these on the uh, Hamas Woe, Miss Woe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Moses wrote the code, but so did a non Ben David. Founder of the car, South Carolina, North Carolina, 7th century, 800s. As a result of the tremendous intellectual commotion produced throughout the Orient by the swift conquest of the Arabs and the collision, collision of victorious Islam, more and more war, they're telling you in so many words, with the older religions and cultures of the world, there arose a large number of religious sects, especially in Persia, Babylonia, Syria, Judaism. <laughs> Did not escape this general fermentation. The weak remnants of the earlier schisms, the Sadducees and Essenes, picked up new life and flickered once more before their final extinction. 
And remember, the Byzantine Empire fell 1453. We're talking final extinction. This man, Anam and David, had been a candidate for the highest dignity existing among the Jews at that time, the Exilarchate. That was the highest dignity was the Exilarch. So all that David Sawson flow, all these Exilarchs, that's the highest dignity. So that's why the hijack, or in the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar will raise him up to the highest dignity. But that doesn't mean the people have signed off on that. They may have raised up their own Exilarch to the highest dignity. And now you got competition. When about the year 7, 760, the Exilarch, probably Isaac, <laughs> is Kawi, died and appeared that two brothers among his nearest kin, probably nephews of his, Anan and Josiah, Hassan, were next in order of succession to the exalted office. The former was older and richer in theological knowledge. Then he, then the latter, Shalak, and was thus the better fitted for the position of prince of the exile. He should have received the preference over the younger and less learned Josiah. Nevertheless, a nomination was given to the latter. Josiah was elected exilarch by the rectors of the Babylonian colleges and by the notables of the chief Jewish congregations. And the choice was confirmed by the Caliph of Baghdad. Now, would this be Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> so he proclaimed himself anti exilar Okay, you got the links. Now, the Sefer Hamas Woe was also written by Rabbi Moshe. Right. And the Sefer Hamas Woe, they say, Was also written by Anna. Wow. <laughs> La -wa. And David Alcum, well, Alcumi's attitude <laughs> to Anan Ben David, right? And his violent opposition to the Adonites. So he opposed. Anon in them, right? But this is Daniel. And could this be the Daniel who is the son of David, who is one of the four Israelites who died without sin? Whose name means <laughs> Kiliad, which can be translated perfection of the father, is a reference to that legend because David, they weren't sure if Daniel was the son of David or his, uh, was it his widow? They questioned whether Abigail was pregnant because, oh, she was a widow. And then David took her as wife. So they didn't know if Daniel was a son of Nabal or David. So God or Hawa arranged that Kiliab or Daniel would resemble David. And he is the perfection in resemblance to David. So he's raised up high. We're talking Daniel. Right? And this Daniel al -Kun has this attitude towards his bro Anna. <laughs> he's in opposition to the Anodites. The first car is Anand's followers and immediate successors are characteristic of his place in Karism. At first, he esteemed Anand highly, calling him Rosh Hamashkilim, chief of the scholars. Later, he called him chief of the fool. Daniel's opinions were respected by the Karians. Daniel later immigrated to Jerusalem and founded the Order of the Mourners of Zion. He built the oldest Karyat synagogue, which is located in Jerusalem. <laughs> so these these players ain't no joke. He 
it says that wherever Malachim angels are mentioned in the Bible, the designation does not refer to living, speaking beings who act as messengers, but to forces of nature. He say that these angels are dragons, are forces of nature, <laughs> the fire, the water, the ether, right? The wind, the fall, through which Hawa performs his works, compared to Mamanide. This may be due to the influence of the Sadducees, who also denied the existence of angels. We're talking dragons. They didn't say no men with wings. They're talking about that fire, boss. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah, man. So this seemed to be this going back and forth between Anion and David, but the source could have been that Daniel <laughs> was in captivity in the book of Daniel. He was raised up by Nebuchadnezzar, but Anah <laughs> was anti-rabbinical. He was anti-whatever they were trying to push in terms of Babylon, man. So there became a schism. But again, we're just talking about seven seventy. When Anon wrote the code of his order, Sefer Hamas wall. And like we were just saying, was it 770 have to do with this, uh, you know, Kalelu. Still talking Axelarks, and <laughs> we're still talking Babylon, right? Okay. And the Catholicism is Cathay, and the Cathay means pure land or Cateo, right? India Superior. Okay. Kalelu's artifacts from Tucson. The Kalelu's records speak of Theodorus as the leader of many peoples who leave the Roman lands for Kalelu's in 775 AD. Covey and others believe that Theodorus is a Hebrew, not Jewish, Hebrew leader in the city of Rome. We're talking Rimon, pomegranate, Rimani. However, this is too literal reading in the term Rome. Wanaga, we're talking 775 AD. We're talking 770 <laughs> AD, 760 CE. I mean, wow, right? Very, very wow. We're talking 700s. They're talking 700s. They're talking keeping the code and, you know, the writing of the code. Theodorus is none other than the Hebrew king of Sept, seven, seven cities, Septimania. <clears throat> a Romani Hebrew state, not Jewish Hebrew state in southern France. We're talking Canada, man. He is the son of the first Hebrew king of the seven cities of Ghost, Septimane, and also called Theodoric. Theodoric, the area, America. De Norban, Maquia, Tadros. Theodorus Dietrich, Theodore America, Chetiv, Nehemiah, Neyman, Amor, Ben Amor. He's also the king of Saxony, Duke of Bavaria. He and his brothers were great warrior Davidic princes. So you got the Davidic princesses popping off in 700s 
in Kalalu's America, my nigga. You got the Vidic princesses popping off. <laughs> when you talk Ananites and Exilarchs. And they're writing the code at the same time. Sephiroth Ahmed's Woe, Book of Precepts, Book of the Commandments. So all happening in the 700s, right? His book, Sefer HaMetz Woe, the book of precepts, which occupied him for seven years, several years, a lot, and which was published around 770. And around that time, 775, you're saying we have great Davidic wars, wars of the house of David during the time of Charlemagne. Professor Arthur Zuckerm Zuckerman in his book of Jewish Princeton in Feudal France conf confuses him, says who, right? <laughs> With his father who bears the same Frankish names of Theoderic and Amadri. Amadri Ka. On the death of his father, Machir Theodoric, in about 760. 5 AD, Nehemiah Theodore becomes the Western Axelar. House of David, right? And leader of the Hebrews of this revived Western Roman Empire, Charlemagne. Again, you got this before, right? 775, Nehemiah Theodore reconquers the American Empire of Calais. Calais was ruled by Sylvanus told Texas. Shout out to my Texas Nagas, told Texas, Solomon the Builder. So King Solomon in there. At the same time that you got the David Axelarchs. Who was the brother of Hana or Ania? Now your timeline, you know, it's separated by five, six hundred years, but they flipped your timeline three hundred, a thousand years, eighteen hundred years already. So now you're back in the twelve hundreds with David Sausland. Babylonian, how long has this Babylonian period lasted? And <laughs> hey, he's the brother of Solomon the First. Is this Sylvanus till Texas? Is this Solomon the Builder, hereditary ruler of the former Hebrew ruled Rimon Pomegranate he Hebrew Promised Land colony or Hussein Promised Land? Kalalus was founded in the first century BC by the Babylonian exarch known as Sylvanus Ogal or Bravo, which is where they're getting the barbar. Because Solomon II, Babylonian exarch. Nazi of Mar, ruler of Sumer, <laughs> Sumer set, great Romani Hebrew ruler, soldier, ancestor of the swan, Barbar, Hebrew word of the day, Barbar, Hebrew word of the day, also had a fleet of trading vessels, a fleet of ships, known as the ships of Solomon in 775, boss. Or the swan boats. These ships are shaped like a swan with its sails like the wings of a beautiful gliding white swan. And after his defeat, Solomon's people were sent. These royals were sent to Europe, man. Now you got these Hebrew, ru Hebrew rulers in Europe that are now getting booted back to America. In 1492, when the Moors are being expelled from Spain. No, the Hebrews, the swans are being expelled. The Barbars are being expelled. Now you got us as coming off of boats from Africa now. Managa, we're just talking about the Almags in America. America. 
Tawatha, Ogier, Savannah. So his name is Bravo or Barbar. Barbar. The swan, the Sylvanus swan. Kalelus. American Empire. 775. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. Seven seventy, right? And now you got the same code, Mishnah Torah, being written by Moses. Bin my mind, or Ramba, or Amra. Son of Amra. <laughs> uh oh. So, who wrote the code? Was it Moses or was it Anon Ben David? Or do all these kinds always write their own version of the Torah? Best dismount of all time. Let's go. Rabbi Moshe and Jeannie pops up. Mama Nidi, Ramba, right? 1138. The Press of John letter was written in 1165, 12th century. So this Moses is in Egypt, just like that Moses. That's crazy. I said, that's crazy. Salimon or Sylvanus to Texas. And he's husband of an Amazon queen, Labana, queen of Rubadi Gadi Amadi. Brother of Hanan or Aniyah, right? Son of Prester John. Let's go. Then the Hanan is the Aniyah. Is the Kana. And the Anion is everywhere. In America. Because <laughs> remember, we're just talking about the Empire. Kalelus. Allow why we we're talking about Ania. I said we we're just talking about Ania. So now we see why Ania is all over the place on these maps. And so is Anaya. Or Asia. Asia, boss. Any, uh, let's go. Lawa. Will David rule again? <laughs> now that we've seen all the evidence and all the blueprints. And all the heretical footprints of your mothers, your fathers. Now we see the, clearly that there's a covenant with Dawi that David will rise again, Jeremiah 30. But they shall serve a while their power. And David, their king, whom I will raise up for them. <laughs> Ezekiel 37, verse 24. David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall have one shepherd, not three, not two. One. Hawa is not the author of confusion, man. One shepherd means one shepherd. David, firstborn by. Prester John, priest king. 
and they shall all walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Keep the code. Hosea 3. Afterwards, the children of Israel shall return. Seek the creator first. And second, David, their king. Now we're on Presta 133. We on the warpath. We got that water. <laughs> we got that fire. And they shall fear one his goodness in the latter day. Wow, it's only one. Wow, H one nine six one. Wow, primitive root to exist, to be or become, come to pass. X marks the spot. <laughs> Solar eclipse, April eighth, man. X marks the spot all together. You're now accomplished, man. Because X marks the spot, Hebrew tile, the mark, the sign, the covenant, that we, we are accomplished, we are committed, but we have broken our code, <laughs> we have caused, you know, Deuteronomy 28, the curses as well, right, we have fainted, we have fallen, <laughs> it has happened, yeah. What are we following? That towel let you know. Pertain. Have you quit on oneself? Have you been out of cold? What does Hawaii require? And again, <laughs> the towel marks the spot. And this is what they turned into. Uh, what they say, Jehovah now. Yah, 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 but before they put that yah on it, we already see that they had the wa or vav, right? And they turned the wa's into the vav's in the Hebrew. We got it, we got it, let's go. Searches for an imaginary kingdom, legend, present John. For the Dismount by Lev Nikolavich Gumelev. Just looking at these hard hits, and we really got to take our time with this one, man. This is such a beautiful document right here, man. But let us add the words of the minority friar William of Rubric to the Muslim author's information. It was at this time when the Franks took Antioch, June 1098. That rule in the northern lands belonged to a single person named Khan. Khan. Two words have been confused. Khan and Khan, i.e. soothsayer or magi or priest. This Khan. <laughs> Let's get it, man. This Khan was a Karakatai. So this is what they turn into the Kariism. Karaism, right? And the Kariites. Because you already know they got the Judaisms. Oh, yeah, let's get it right here. But this Kara, I came out the Kara Katar. The Kara means black, they say in Turkic, right? <laughs> Did you know the car could also be spelled with a Q? And this reminds me of the Quran, right? <laughs> I 
say all this has Hebrew roots, man, right? The Qumran, the Kara, Kara, to read. Uh oh. We also know that it means black and Turkic, man. So, Hebrew religious movement that repudiated oral tradition as a source of divine law and defended the Hebrew Bible as the sole authentic font of the religious doctrine and practice. So, they only rock with the Tanakh. They didn't rock with no new test. And dismissing the Talmud as a man made law substituted for the God given Torah. They only rock with their Torah. Karaism set itself in direct opposition to rabbinic Judaism. So if these are the founders of the Karaites. Yeah. We're just saying that these are the tribe of the Kara Katai. Yeah. This Khan was a Kara Katai. 1098, there was not yet a division into Katai. Katai means Cathay. So you got Cateo on these Indian superior maps. That's Katai or Katai. Cathay means pure land, Katai or Karda said meant black. So it's like these melanated cons of the pure promised land. America, Manaka. American Empire, right? Sylvanus to Texas, Khan. Kara Katai, the 13th century author, is modernizing these Katai. Kara Katai lived in certain hills through which I pass. He went by one of these three. One of the three passes between the Western and the internal parts of Middle Asia. Where's Asia? Between the Altai and the Tayani Shan. And in the valley between these mountains lived a certain Nestorian. Here we go with this word again. Nestorian pastor. A powerful man holding sway over the people called Nema and belonging to the Nestorian Christians. These Naamans. Naaman. It's remind me of these titles they use, you know. Naaman, right? <laughs> I knew I saw it somewhere. Theodorus is also Neymar, right? Okay. <laughs> Theodorus is also Neymar. Nestorian pastor, powerful man. Hold his sway over the people called Neymar. Belonging to the Nestorians, Hijack City. They're not Christians, we know that. But they're calling them Nestorians. Western de Zagara, the region of the Karakatan, Gur, Ka, remember? The people of Gur in the medieval empire book are still Israel. Khan, Yellow Dashi is described on the death of Khan Ka. This Nestorian. Nestorian, right? Not Christian. Nestorian proclaimed himself a king, and the Nestorians called him King John, saying ten times more about him than was consistent with the truth. This is how the Nestorians behave who arrive from those countries. They create great speeches from nothing. <laughs> Sound like somebody trying to hate on the Nestorians. Rubik certainly describes Yellow Dashi in the territory of his continent, called it Nema. Rashid al Din notes that prior to the end of the 13th century, the Nema had only one lord, Eniat or Enanka, or Jahan or Eva. <laughs> All the same, a name either easily recast as John or simply the name John converted into Eniat. <sighs> Oh, wow. 
They keep saying the historians, man. What's the title of Nestor? You know, shout out to the Khan Zion Marley, man, Lauren Hill, you know what I mean? All the all the cons, man. Uh, Ziggy, Rohan, Marley, man, all the cons. Cause in the movie, they said Bob Marley's name was also Nestor. And Nestor is a name for an old king renowned for wise counsel. So when they call them their story and Christians, they're connecting this lineage to an old king and wise old king, right? That's how you dodge the hijack. We're just talking wise old kings when we're talking Nestor, Nestorian, and all that stuff. Let's keep going. <laughs> Best this man of all time. We know Columbus came here looking for the car. Atlantic Monthly Volume 104, Wave Surfers, you know what's up. Cathay, right? It's Katai. Zapongo, right? Remember that island tucked in? Past Florida, right, which is Japan. Kapangu is Japan. This was the map shown to King Henry. In the 1500s. Right? Showed to King Henry the seventh in the year 1500s. This is the map of America and the way to China. How can it be the map of America and the way to China? As men believed it to be. Well, I see Florida... And I see China, and I see C A T H A Y Cathay, which is the Karaka Thai in America, boss. And here's Ptolemy's India. Golden spices, and here's Japan, the great Isle of Kapongo, which some call Japan. They say Zipongo, they're saying Kapongo. Cathay and Zipongo is Kapongo. A week before he lands in Guadalajara, Columbus' opinions that the Pizan suggested to steer southwest is not made with respect to Kapongo or Japan, the real Japan. Two days after the discovery, he feels he must go on to try and find Kapongo, and when he reaches Cuba, he believes it from the signs the Indians make to be this very land. So he believed when he reached Cuba that he was in Capango. Which is Japan. At the same time, he's equally anxious to reach the mainland of China. And the mainland of China is America or North America or Asia Major or India Superior, or Karakata, Cathay. Come. This is their map. At the same time, he's equally anxious to reach the mainland of China or America. He is determined to deliver the letters to the Catholic Cathay kings to the Grand Khan. And this is the great Khan of China <laughs> in Cathay, America, next to Florida. 
Who would Florida have to do with the great con of China and Cathay? <laughs> and the founder of you, we just talking Preston John. So he wanted to deliver these letters to the Cathay kings, to the grand con. Now so hopeless an antagonism with this said grand con he gathers. He gathers from the natives, the Cuban monarch was now at war. The Khan's great ships, he understood, came to Cuba, 10 days journey from the Chinese mainland. We say, well, that Cuba ain't no 10 days from China. <laughs> but this Cuba is 10 days <laughs> on the boat, maybe, from China mainland. This could be a 10-day ride. <laughs> from China Cafe. 10 days journey from the Chinese mainland, the cotton in the West Indies will be sure of a good market in his cities. His majesty was perhaps in the grand city of Cathay. C-A-T-H-A-Y. America, because this is the map of America shown to King Henry. Oh, Columbus in them, right? His Majesty was perhaps in the grand city of Cathay. It is certain, he writes, while still off in the Cuban coast, that I am in front of Zeto and Kansai of Amoy Harbor in Hong Kong. And again in the Cariba and Caniba, or Caniba, which was described to him as the main land behind Espanola and our language, the north coast of South America. Columbus believes he has at last located the name and kingdom of the Khan. He spelled it C-A-N like American Khan. <laughs> American. Yeah, this is the great Khan of China. Khan, Khan. Khan means priest in Hebrew, right? They don't know where, oh, where, oh, where. You know, they 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 hide our orientation, right? They say we from Africa, boss. <laughs> As if all of Ama's body is anything other than melanin all throughout. And these indigenous didn't say they were from one area. You know, they <laughs> they were from the lands they were found on, right? And who's to say this <laughs> large landmass, which is way bigger than <laughs> what we consider America, yada, yada. It's not still there, and it's not still the motherland when we talk moot. And all this is connected to California, Mount Shasta, the Vortexes, and all this right here. The Strait of Anion right here, my nugget. The Strait of Anion. Wow. Wow. This is why we on Preston 133, and this is why the investigation continues. They say Prince Joseph of Rubadi got Imani. Just like we got David the First and all that. Is this the Joseph, Manada? Is this the Joseph? Still talking 1200s. And he's the son of Judah the <laughs> First. Another hard hit for the dismount. I knew there was one more. And Judah the first, well, hell, my night, Judah the first, man. He also has a wife named Hannah.
Now you got Princess Hannah of Tahama, Manak, who's the wife of Judah, raiding king of her body, Ganimani, mother of Prince Joseph. Is this the King Joseph of the scriptures, right, of the Bible? I mean, this is what we're talking about. Is Judah the first, who has a wife named Hannah, the same as David the first, <laughs> who has a wife named Hannah, who now they call her Hannah, Jewish Queen of Tahama. Is he the same as Raja Raja, Jadaran again, press the child, who also has a wife named Hannah. This time you got a lady Hannah of Babylon. So you see how we gotta connect all the Hannahs, man. <laughs> you got Lady Hannah of Babylon, Hannah, Jewish, um, Queen of Tahama. And you got Judah the first wife, who now they call Princess Hannah of Tahama. Ooh, and what's this Tahama about? Because this Tahama mama, <laughs> this Ta'ama, mm, this Ta'ama keeps popping up. Here you go, back to the Babylon flow, which connects you back with the David Sosling of Babylon. Back to... Uh, Jetera. So who's Prince Jetera of the Islands? <laughs> king of the Islands. So what do they call him? King or Prince? You know, these titles are the same as Khan. could be King or Prince. Same Jetera, though, right? Same general. And now Lady Hannah is called, ooh, Princess Rusadan again. So <laughs> enter the Bragantioni dynasties, man. So next time we're going to go right in. I just wanted to make our way back here again officially, man. And we're going to. Coming right in on 134, we're talking about the House of Georgia and the Bragantioni dynasty. Now that you can correlate the Bragantionis, you know what I'm saying, with the Russes, right? The Russes, again, with the House of Clancy, all Andreas, the Rus, right? Because we're still just talking the lost tribes of Israel. I Identity. We're still talking copper colored cons with the Tao, with wisdom, Ama, being the conqueror of fortune, my nigga. These roots are the same roots as we got with the uh, Lady Anne Roos, Lost Tries of Anne Roos. The Roos of that, I'm saying. The Roos is the Ross. <laughs> Rastafari, right? <laughs> the Rastafari is the Ross. You know what I'm saying? The Ross is the Ross is the Roos, my nigga. One letter rule. Dodge the vowels. When you're talking Lady Andrews, you're talking the Roos. Lady Andrews. Huh? Who's Lady Roos, right? Who's Lady Andrews, right? Well, she's also Lady Hannah, who's the mother of David Sosley, my nigga. <laughs> ka? Ka, ka. She's also Lady Hannah, who's the Hebrew queen of Ta'ama, who's the wife of David the first, my daddy. Yeah. I said she's Lady Hannah of Babylon now, right? Because <laughs> these are all the Jews or Hebrews during this Persian and Babylonian situation captivity. And this Lady Hannah of Babylon is the mother of Solomon and David. David Sosley. So what's the difference between this David Sosley of Babylon and this David Sosley? And just like we'll get on the uh, House of Georgia, right? And Georgia, Georgia on my mind. We got to go back and Queen Tamar. Because they're calling... This David Sosslin King Consort, which means <laughs> that Lady Roos at this time, she got the car. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I mean, if you're King Consort, <laughs> that 
That means, you know, either wifey got the con or you're ruling, you know, like you're co-ruling, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that seems to be the plausible case with these Presters and these uh, queen, um, these Amazon queens, these Amazon high queens. And this is what we got before with this Osetia situation. The Osetia situation. And we say, who's the Osets, right? Who are these Osetians? Because when you get into the islands, <laughs> when you get into the islands, this is what we're talking about. Kind of the islands. When you get into these David Sauslands, right? And these Georgians, you're back to the islands. I can't make this stuff up, man. And the islands are going to connect you with the Osetians. And the Osetians are going to connect you with this Georgian Osetian conflict of Alania. This is all stuff we got to, you know, track down in 134. It's going to connect you with the Sarmatian flow. The Sarmatian flow <laughs> is going to connect you directly, Managi, with the Amazon flow. The Scythian Amazon, and again, the Scythian comes from the Sco Scotia. The Scotia comes from Princess Scotia, right? And all these Scotias connect directly back with the lost tribes of the Ross, of the Roos, of Lady Anne Ross. It's going to connect you with Princess Scotia of Egypt. <laughs> King Aramon and Princess Tamar, my nigga. Uh-oh. So the Scots are the Scotia. The Scots are the Scotia, which is why they say Scottish, right? But you can see clearly that the Scots are connected with the Princess Scotia, which is connected with the Princess Tamar. And all of them are connected... <laughs> with the kings and queens in the house of Jerusalem. St. Andrew and the kindred of the kings of Jerusalem. Right? And again, these Khazars <laughs> are the Caesar, the Khazarias, right? The Khazar are the Khazarias. Back to becoming Christian, the conversion of the Roman Cappadocia, because they had to create this Christianity to make sure that Moses or Mosad became a intriguing primal ancestor, man, became a, a lost memory, a fragment of an abandoned past, a casualty of the adoption of Greek mythology, the imposition of Roman rule. Or hijack. Who's the Roman Emperor? Who's the Roman Emperor? Black ass King Charles. So it's the more and more war that put this into mythos, that turned this into a forgotten fragment of the abandoned past that made Moses the founder meaningless, my naughty. That made him obscure through a swerving. This Moses became Mazaka. But he's an intriguing primal ancestor. <laughs> but now he's completely obscure. <clears throat> he was an intriguing primal ancestor. But Jose Josephus tried to fit him in to biblical genealogies by equating him with Meshach, Moshe, Meshach. So we just put him in the biblical timeline, like hiding this fact that this Moses is going to connect in the real timeline with Cappadocia, with Mazaka, or Khazaria, Khazaria, because he's Khazar, Khazar line is originally the Moses flow, and it was taken down in 1453, one year after the 1452 Papal Bull, and the Rus and the Franks, right, before we got this Frankish situation, they were tribed up part and parcel, 
part and parcel with the Franks, right? The root, the roots, the Ross, and the Franks. All these are Nagas, man. And they together were the knights. Swan knights, my Naga. Templar knights, my Naga. Sylvanus to Texas. We're talking the land of the Rus. The princess of the Rus, or what do they call it? Princess Rusada. Back to the Jedaron, right? So we'll connect the House of Georgia. We'll get deeper on this island flow, this Elania flow, Scythia flow, Amazon flow. Connect that with the Sarmatian flow. A large confederation of ancient Iranian. Well, where's Iran? One more time, say it with me, boss. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get we're gonna get the world's beyond the boss, man. Say it with me, boss. <laughs> Iboria, Iboria. Where's Iranistan? Right. I R A N I S T A N. Iranistan is Persia, originally connected with big old South America here. Right on top of the Thoth Amon spell barrier, my nigga. I can't make this up. So when they talk Iranistan and all this Iranian situation, yeah. Now we can get it when we talk Alans, right? When we talk Amazons or when we talk Sarmatians. That they're bringing in this Iranistan, which was once a part of South America. <laughs> now we can connect it with the Amazons, huh? Because we're talking South America, boss. Back to the Jadaron. Ooh wee. <laughs> hey. It's, e it's easy work when you surf in the way. So what's up with this Jadaron? So when we look at this Jadaron, King of the Islands, and we look back at these these islands and you know having to do with this Osetia situation and all that, right? This Osetia connects directly with the islands and it connects directly with the Sarmatians, and these Sarmatians connect directly with the Amazon queens. Hi, Amazon queens, back to the Lady Hannah, which is why <laughs> Preston John Roger here, Roger is married to Lady Hannah, who is in High Allen. She's in High Elania. She's in High Amazon. Which is why David the First is married to Lady Hannah, who is a high Amazon queen. Same thing. Which is why Judah the First is married to Lady Hannah. These islands, these Sumatians, are connected with the Amazon. Or the Hannas. This Jadaron is the same Jadaron. Preston, married to Lady Hannah. King of the Islands. This time he calls him husband of Rusadon, which lets us know that another title for Hannah is Princess of the Rus. Rus, right? <laughs> I can't make this up. Of Georgia. And he's the son of a ton, king of the islands, man. Father of David Sausland, the same thing, right? <laughs> that we got from Preston John, Roger and Roger. Father of Axelard, David Sausland. Oh, wow. So this Jadaron, right, with Rusadon, king of the islands. And we see it all connected. Races of men. Races of men by Robert Knox. Remember, man, remember. The last hypothesis 
I believe, offer the credulous for the peopling of America. What's the incredible? What's the incredible? <laughs> What's the incredible hypothesis for the peopling of America for the dismount? Always accepting that standby of the thoroughbred theorist, namely that the copper, copper, copper Indians of India superior. The copper Indians, that is, the true Americans, like it says in the 18, 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary, definition of American, the copper color race is found here, boss. Not brought here, found here, boss. These copper Indians are the true Americans, which are the lost tribes of Israel. Say it with me, cop. Body, body back for the illusion. Who fled there on rafts headed, I suppose, by Prester John. Body, body back <laughs> for the illusion. Now, these aren't rafts from Africa, boss. These are rafts from anywhere <laughs> that's connected to the Straits of Antioch, Kingdom of Antioch. Where was Preston John coming from, right? Was he coming from Lemuria, Mu? Was Preston John coming from Atlantis, boy? Then you got Africa. So like Horace Butter likes to skip over all these lands to get to Africa when they say East. East still has more lands. And if you go East, East, now we're talking Mu. Now we're talking Lemuria. Let's go. But Robert Knox, he ain't too shy. <laughs> He's letting us know that these copper Indians are the true Americans, which are the lost tribes of Israel, which are the cons of Prester John. In your face, let's get it. Say it with me. Hi, Borea. Yeah, for the balcony surfers. Well, you got Africa, you got South America, North America, all that, right? All this Sarmatian drop. <laughs> this always reminds me of this Sumerian drop. And Sumeria's right here with northern and southern clans. Then you got this Antioch flow, which has 12 tribes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 tribes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we can start talking Peru and the Black Kingdoms and Amazonia, Timbuktu is right here, Timbuktu, Darfur, all this is connected to the promised land. You have Punt, you have Zimbabwe originally here, Iranistan or Persia originally connected to South America where you have the Thamanum, Thothamon spelled there, <laughs> hijack city, just like you have Thoth. In the moving islands, right? <laughs> Land of no return. Come. So they say it's a it's a game map. Yeah, it's nothing to see here, boss, but it sure is detail. Sure is detail. <laughs> when it comes to uh Asia Major, India Superior, Cafe. You got the land of Shem, the land of Sajia, which is Egypt. Luxor, Kim, right? Kirkish Sea. <laughs> yeah, it's all happening here, man. Let's go. Becoming Christian. Uh oh. For the dismile. Hey, man. Becoming Christian, the conversion of Roman Cappadocia. Is it Cap or is it Cappadocia, man? Founded the Cappadocians. Remember this drop, man? Told you it's an oldie but goodie. In his ecclesiastical history, Philostrosius was hence both ecumenical, wow. ecumenical and local. He included many tidbits of odd information about biblical events in the Roman Empire. And he was interested in legends about Cappadocia when he mentioned Mazaka, the original name for the city that eventually became Khazaria. So the original Khazars were from Mazaka. And Mazaka is what? For the dismount. He noted that his name was derived from Mo 
Sock or Moses, the founder of the Cappadocians. <laughs> so the real Cappadocians are the tribes of Moses, which became the Caesars or Czars of Khazaria. <laughs> The original Czars are Hebrews. The original Khazars are Hebrew. The original Cappadocians are the tribes of Mosak, Mazaka. Mosak's name suggests some sort of Shemitic derivation, my night. This is Moses. We're talking Shem, ain't we? And his re reputation as the founder of the Cappadocians seems to hint at a foundational legend for the region that was older than the adaptation of Greek myths. So before you had Atlantean myths, you had you got foundational legend. And this foundational legend connects with the Hebrews, connect with the Mosak, even in the time of the Byzantine Empire. Because the Byzantine Empire fell in what year? I told you to remember the year in the beginning. 1453, one year after the 15th. 1452 Papu Bull. One year later than the Doom Diverses 1452, this empire of Mosak, Moses, falls one year later in 1453. The Byzantine, which was originally the Khazarias and the Cappadocia and the Mazaka. But we're just talking Moses, Mosak, which has a Shemitic derivation. And it hints at this foundational legend in the early Roman Empire. People outside Cappadocia had heard of Moses, I mean Mosach too. The Jewish or Hebrew historian Josephus even tried to fit him into the biblical genealogies, my nugget. <laughs> he tried to fit him in there in a slick way by equating him with the Meshach, one of the grandsons of Noah. So they fit him in by making him Meshach, grandson of Noah. But we're just talking Mosach. We're just talking Moshe. Although Mosach is an intriguing primal ancestor, he unfortunately remains completely obscure. Why? Because you're not connecting Moses with Mosach and Mazaka and the Byzantine and Cappadocia. Philostrogia, in fact, knew so little about the legend that he could not match up the consonants and vowels in order to make sense of the postulated link between the city's name of Mazaka and Mosak's name. So he shrugged and invented a makeshift phonetic transfer. After the passage of time, the city was called Mazaka through a quote-unquote swervy hijacked city. They changed the name to Mazaka through a swerving, but it was Moses Managa. And he couldn't match up the consonants or the vowels. Yeah, in the later Roman Empire, all that survived of whatever legends of Moses there may have been about Mosak were his name, his reputation, and his enigmatic connection with the name of the city. The myth of Mosak, the founder, was a lost memory, a fragment of an abandoned past, a casualty of the adaptation of Greek mythology, the imposition of Roman rule, or, or the expansion of Christianity. The expansion of Christianity turned Moses into a lost memory, it turned the Byzantine and Mazaka Cappadocia, the Hebrew foundation right there. Remember, Presser John is the emperor of the three Indias, and you're talking Europe, you're talking Asia, you're talking Asia here, Asia there. We're talking Indias, man. And Mosak, the founder, became meaningless because of what? Christianity. Mosak. The founder became meaningless because of what? Christianity. His name, reputation. <laughs> you only know his name through the Hebrew flow. You don't know it through the Byzantine flow. Through a swerving, it was changed. We're talking about an intriguing 
primal ancestor kind. Moses, the founder, founder of the Cappadocians. A fragment of an abandoned past, a casualty of the adoption of Greek mythology, imposition of Roman rule, and the expansion of Christianity, my nuts. Well, we're talking Rambam, Moshe, <laughs> uh, son of Amram or Rambam. And can we die to three major chronological time shifts? 333 years, 1,054 years, man. <laughs> 1,778 years. Can we find Kapongo again in the mainland? Of Cathay, Kateo, or Kara, Ka, Tai, Manai. This has been the 133rd installment of the Prestigeon Investigation. Managas, forever you keep the water flowing. Forever, Managas, you keep the fire burning and continue to stay up. Suit up and choose up, and many more connections are to be made as our investigation continues. <laughs> We're just talking about the con, con. <laughs> oh, who, oh, who is Prestigeon? Shalawama cons the Wada for surfing away with a naga nine above the barrier because ain't no stopping us now in the year they drag. Shalom, cause that what da allow. Wow.